Well, Nigerian banks recorded a combined pre-tax uh, profit of 1.55 trillion era in the first quarter of 2024, marking a 263% year-on-year increase compared to 436 billion era in first quarter 2023, with uh, GTCO uh, GT uh, posting the highest profit in banking history for the quarter. Well, the banking sector's performance uh, was driven by a significant increase in net interest income and fair value gains on financial instruments are uh, influenced by rising interest uh, rate and narrow fluctuations contributing to record-breaking profit for several banks there. But top performers in the first quarter of 2024 included Zenith Bank with about 320.2 billion uh, pre-tax profit there. But FVN Holdings with 238.5 billion era, Access Holdings Cominex with about 202.7 billion era, and UBA with 150. 6.3 billion Nara showcasing the sector's profitability and growth despite economic uh, challenges. Well, we're now joined by Group CEO, Carrier Z Management, Johnson Chuku. Uh, as he joins us virtually now, we'll take a look at uh, the latest uh, earnings report from Nigeria's leading banks. Uh, good to have you on our rise section. Thank you for joining us at this hour. Thank you, Frank, for having me. Good evening. Yeah, good evening. Let's uh, uh, get to your perspective. What do you make of the latest earnings by uh, some of the big banks, such as UBA, Access Bank is there, and of course, uh, Airbnb Holdings is also there? Frank, it basically means that the banks are taking advantage of the current economic policy environment. Uh, you've seen the banks are growing their uh, interest income, and therefore they're also growing their uh, gross earnings. Uh, though their interest expense is also growing, we've also seen a material improvement, continuous earnings from fair value uh, uh, of assets, uh, that's a revaluation of short-term asset trading assets. We also seen an increase in, inv uh, in investment in, 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 in investment securities. I mean, in the bank's uh, um, investment in what we call investment security, that is trading security, like investment in treasury bills. So what the banks are doing, they are riding the benefits of high interest rate environment. Uh, despite the fact that the central bank has increased their car reserve ratio to about 50%, what the, what the banks are doing is that they are optimizing their liquidity by earning the optimum they can earn from investment in treasury bills and investment in OMO, that's open market operation instruments issued by the central bank, as well as uh, increasing the interest rate payable or paid on their credits. Uh, which is why you saw in some of the banks, a bank like most of the banks had an increase in interest income by over 100 percent. Well, let's look at drill down a bit more into UBA uh, nine more resort for for us. Let's look at uh, what, what stood out for you for UBA resort. Well, a couple of things stood out uh, in UBA resort. One is their earnings from fair value uh, uh, assets, uh, or assets um, uh, here that fair value, or fair value uh, through uh, profit and loss. Uh, we saw a material increase in that, over 100%. Uh, we saw a, a significant increase in the investment in uh, securities, tradable securities, tra probably tra treasury bills are normal. And then we saw that the UBA, did not materially grow their loans, which means they are conscious of the fact that um, increase in loans at the period when you have high interest environment could lead to high increase in delinquency or the rate of delinquency. So the, instead of growing their risk assets, they are rather growing their investment in securities. Uh, so what they are doing is that they are holding lower uh, uh, risk instruments that are giving them high yield. Remember that as, as late as August this year, Treasury bills. Federal government treasury base was going above 20 percent. I think at some point it was about 22 percent uh, for the 364-day instruments, which gives you effective yield of close to 27, 28 percent. So the banks are optimizing that. Of course, we're also seeing a pressure or some pressure by depositors who are asking for higher uh, interest rates on their deposits. So you saw an increase in interest expense. But overall, uh, we've seen a bank whose earnings has Go, was above 500, uh, profit after that was above 500 uh, billion. Uh, not only that, we've seen a, a price earnings ratio of uh, a multiple of less than two. Uh, and we see a return on, on investment or return on equity, uh, NS, NS yield of above 
Those are exceptional returns when you talk of returns accruing to investors. Let's take a look at the Access Bank, uh, for instance, reporting about uh, 3 trillion uh, Naira earnings. What other key items are you looking at in the results for Access Bank? Well, Access Bank, uh, in terms of earnings, uh, obviously has the highest level of earnings, uh, about three, over three, 3 trillion Naira in earnings. But in terms of profitability, Access Bank profit was slightly below the two banks we are comparing them to, that is uh, uh, First Bank and, and, and UBA. Uh, so you also observe that Access Bank has high operating costs. The operating cost of Access Bank in that nine months was over one trillion naira, and I think Access Bank needs to watch that. But beyond that, once they can watch, keep a tap on the operating, pro, operating uh, expense, then because they are having the, earning the highest level of return, about over three trillion, the Access Bank should ordinarily turn out to be the most profitable bank once they have, can have a, 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 a strong lead uh, cap on their operating expense. But in terms of earnings, well, Access Bank also came out with a, a balance sheet of over 40 trillion and also the largest balance sheet in the bank. So what that bought for me is that Asset Bank presents huge upside potential in terms of stronger earnings in the near future. I'd like, you to, I'd like to take you back to UBA's earning. If you look at the UBA, it, it, the bank is looking to open a Saudi Arabia office within a year, uh, as Access also just got approval to buy about 100% of National Bank of Kenya. What do you make of the global expansion of these two Nigerian big banks? Well, I think one of the things that Nigerian banks have realized is that they need to diversify the geography source of their earnings. Of course, if you look at the earnings we are talking about, uh, we, have, we have been discussing, you see a, there's a huge impact of Naira devaluation coming from exchange gain or fair value of uh, assets through profit and loss. Those are indications of earnings from, uh, from Naira devaluation. So the implication of that, that cannot actually reverse. Uh, you can actually, if you have a situation where a particular geographical location account for a huge percentage of your operating income, like with the most of the banks today have. Uh, there is a need for you to diversify. I think the Nigerian banks have seen that, and they also know, recognize the fact that, look, they are strong or reasonably strong economies that they can diversify into and therefore diversify their source of earnings and reduce the suffering risk of the country of Nigeria on their balances and earnings. And I think that's why, what a fund um, access banks continuous expansion within the African continent and even beyond Africa. And UBA's intention to go to uh, Saudi Arabia and it's, uh, UBA, you already have UBA in New York and I think you have UBA in, in UK. So going to Saudi Arabia, which is one of the uh, strongest economies in the MENA region, that is Middle East and North African region, uh, I think uh, it's clearly an intention to diversify their risk. I want to let you go, but uh, of course, let's talk about uh, FBN Holdings before I let you go. Nine months result is also on the street this week as First Bank uh, is, uh, is also operating, I mean, uh, in terms of uh, opening about 5.9 billion rights of our Monday. So uh, give us your analysis for, for these uh, in terms of invest um, uh, from investors and um, asset management perspective. So what are you looking at? Well, Frank, uh, if you look at the uh, price of a first bank um, uh, and you compare it to their earnings and you see that their P-E ratio is less than two, which means you can recover your investment based on the earnings in less than two years. We saw that earnings seed of more than 50%, which then means that if you buy the stock, the earnings per share is about about 50%, which simply uh, speak about the same thing that within two years, less than two years, you recover your earnings. So what that means is that it makes the, their instrument, their equity offer attractive for investors because you're looking at how long will it take me to, if I hold this instrument, to recover based on the earnings of this company, say less than two years. And the return on, 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 <clears throat> on a yield on your instrument is above 50%. Uh, like I said, we also seen a bank that have seen a consistent growth in their earnings, we saw over 70 percent increase in profit after tax uh, to over 500 uh, billion naira. Uh, we've seen a strong growth in balance sheet, and we also seen a bank that's adopted some level of risk averseness 
we saw uh, that the risk asset grew by about, I think about 40% in the period, in the nine month period, which means they are no longer very bullish. Uh, they obviously have recognized the mistakes they had in the past that led to high incidence of non-performing loans in their balance sheet, which over time they have reasonably written off. So I think the bank presents a great investment potential for anybody who wants to take a position in equities today. I think a good place to leave it there. Thank you so much, Johnson Chuku, CEO of Career Asset Management. Thank you for your time on our exchange. <music>